<laughs> Welcome, amigos. I think we're live. So if you guys can see, you can hear me, just type in zero in the chat. Just want to make sure before we start that we're all good. And this is a fun tutorial. It's a short tutorial, but it's fun because we'll be using a little bit of Photoshop and a little bit of After Effects. Let's go into Photoshop. So the first thing is I'm going to import my video clip and I'm going to import this MP4. And it's important to have this timeline. If you don't see this timeline, very easy, amigos. Just go to Window and make sure you have Timeline selected. And this image, actually not an image, this footage is of Echo Park here by downtown LA. You can see downtown LA in the background. And if we go to image, image size, you can see it's a 4K image. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's go to our layers and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say convert to smart object. And there's a couple of cool tools that we can do. Now that we have a smart object, we can add any of these filters from the filter gallery. So we can go in. And the one that I used for the thumbnail that you guys saw was here, this dry brush. They have a watercolor effect, but I wasn't really pleased. You can see that it's actually taking a long time to load because it's 4K. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim here with the scissors. So I'm going to click here, trim. I'm going to delete this and you know just do a little bit of trimming so let's go down here and let's trim i'm going to delete this now that we have it as a smart object what we can do is we can go ahead and we can scale it down so let's just scale it down to 1920 by 1080 and this should be a lot easier so let's go back to filter to the filter gallery And the one that I use, like I mentioned, was dry brush, but it's cool. Like definitely experiment. You know, you can go ahead to use graphic pen. You can use charcoal, Conti crayon. There's there's a lot of different different filters, and some of them you'll see them in After Effects. So some of them they double up in After Effects. But for this one, I use dry brush. You can play around with the settings, but these are the settings that I used, and just hit OK. So what it does is since it's a smart object it'll apply it to all your frames. If you don't convert it into smart object, it, it would only, it's only going to do it for one frame. But since you have it as a smart object, it's going to globally apply it. So if we scrub through, you see that it takes a while to load each, each frame. You can see that it's apply, it applied the watercolor. Now to export it pretty easy. If you want to mute the audio, you can just click here to mute the audio. Just go over here and go to render video and you'll get this window and just choose you know just choose a name we'll put this dry brush for example and give it a name choose a folder where wherever you want to save it and you have the option to render with adobe media encoder or the photoshop image sequence so i'm going to stick with adobe media encoder i'm going to stick with h264 and I'm going to just stick with high quality. But if you want to change, you can use any of these presets. Good ones are the YouTube HD. They're good ones. The Vimeo, they're pretty good ones as well. But that's all you got to do. And if you want to tweak the range, how many frames you want to render, you can go ahead and do this here. And the last thing is just hit render. This process I already did, so I'm not going to render it. Let me just cancel this. Let's continue. Let's go into... After Effects, and here is the rendered, the rendered video. And I'm going to use this Luma Mat from Shutterstock to kind of reveal this watercolor effect. Now, this is from Shutterstock, so it's something that, that was bought. But if you don't have any, we can always go into, we can go to MitchMartinez.com and he has stock footage that you can download for free and there's several ink splash that you can download for free. So if you don't want to pay for one on any of these stock footage services, you can go to Mitch Martinez. He has these ink drops 
that you guys could go ahead and download for free. Now, talking about plugins, there's a couple plugins that I forgot to mention that are pretty cool. And I mean, they're expensive, the $80, but it's pretty cool. They give you these different effects right here. There's also Red Giant too. Red Giant has these, this plugin that can give you different paint styles. But the whole point of this is, and what I'm trying to do is just, let's use our imagination. Let's really go into Photoshop. Let's see what we can do in Photoshop and then let's finish it in After Effects. So that's, that's basically this tutorial. That's the main point is combining different software to create this cool piece. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our footage and just simply click and drag to the composition icon to make it a comp with the same resolution and same frame rate. And let's just bring in this reveal, this black and white reveal. So it starts right, right here. So I'm gonna trim this layer all in the left, all in the left bracket, and I'm gonna move it over. Now I'm gonna use the track mat. If you don't see the track mat, that's because you need to activate it. Just right click, go to columns, and make sure that modes is switch on. So if I, de if I check it, it hides it. If I go back, it brings it back. Okay, make sure that your footage is at the bottom. And since this is a black and white image, we're gonna be using the Luma mat because the Luma mat works with black and white images. Luma for luminance. The alpha mat works with more with shapes. The color doesn't really matter. Now, a little trick that I use for the Luma mat is white reveals and black conceals. So wherever there's white, it's gonna show up. Wherever it's black, it's gonna hide it. So in this case, we want the reverse. We want Luma inverted mat. And there we go. So let me toggle that transparency grid and let's check it out. Let me just scrub through. Now you can see that it's pretty small and I'm gonna increase it, S for scale, and then just scale it up to 165. Probably go a little bit higher. So that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit Control K to open up the composition settings and I'm just gonna make this bigger. Let's make this 2000 by 2000 to start and let's check it out. Let's make it the width 3000. And I have this texture. And simple, just let's dra drag and drop, scale it up. And let's go ahead and select our footage and let's just change the blending mode. We can change it to, for example, experiment with any of these, but we can go and hit multiply. So it'll blend in nicely with our background texture. And you can obviously go in and you can add a color curve. Go ahead. You can add some saturation. Let's go to the vibrance. Let's bring up the vibrance. Let's bring up the saturation. Okay, so let me switch it to third because third of the quality because this is a little time consuming. And let's switch it to fit to 100 so you can check it out. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now let's take it one step further. You know that I like taking things one step further and let's make a new composition. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. And let's just call it watercolor. And I'm gonna bring in our comp. I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna make it a 3D layer. Let's create a light. And we'll make it a point light, intensity 100. If you want, you can cast the shadows. Hit OK. I'm going to switch it to four views left. And in the four views left, I'm going to go to the right. And you can see our point line is right here. And our image is right here. This is from the right view. These are the orthographic views. This is the top view, the front view, and the right view. So I'm going to push it. And you can see that it's giving a little bit more light. We bring it closer. You can't really see it. Let's push it further out. 
That's perfect. Let's go back to one view. Let's create a camera. 50 millimeters is perfect. And hit P and shift A to open up the position and the point of interest. Let's go all the way to the beginning. And let's go to the, the camera tool, and which is C on the keyboard. And let's just move it, rotate it. Let's go to five seconds, and then let's rotate it here. So we have this nice little move in 3D space. And if you want, we can go ahead, click on the text tool. Let's type in Los Angeles. Let's make this a 3D layer. Let's move it up. Let's move it over. We can rotate it. And let's drill down to the material options and we can say cast shadows. So we have a nice little shadow down here. So let's check it out. Perfect. And then we can go back and just add some easy ease to the camera move. And that is it. Let's do it one more time. So it's pretty simple, but the, the idea is to use Photoshop to give us some of these filters, to add some of these filters, and then bring it into After Effects to do the animation.